for showing up for our catapult session in September. Uh, my name's Chris Dubuque. I'm the field technical services manager out of the Portland, Oregon office. Um, I've got a pretty good presentation for you today. Maybe some functionality you're not super familiar with inside of SolidWorks, although it's uh, been here for quite a while. We're going to take a look at how we can leverage SolidWorks and turn it into uh, a kinematic whiteboard. I'm going to talk a little bit about mechanism design. You know, where does it all start? You know, typically it starts in our heads. We've got maybe an existing design we need to modify, or maybe we just have a brand new idea. You know, in the example here in my little uh, thought bubble, we've got drive shafts, we've got various gear trains, we've got the clamping jaws, maybe we have some pulleys, linkages. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. So what do we do at this point? Well, we try to describe the idea in our head into the physical medium in some way, shape, or form. Very common usage, we go to the good old whiteboard in the conference room. We start sketching everything out. We get the team together to help me collaborate. Uh, of course, we put the very important save, do not erase this up there. But we're starting to take the idea in our heads and you know, make it something useful. Now, what always seems to happen when you get something in a public space, you put the save up on the whiteboard, you come back in later, and everything that you wanted to save has been erased except the text that says save. Unfortunately, all that good collaboration work that we've done with the design team is no longer with us. Or maybe you like to take an old school approach like I do. I still will get out my drafting tools, start laying things out on paper. Again, trying to understand and communicate whatever it is that I've got going on in my head to anybody else. Sometimes this works well. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to deal with. But whichever approach we tend to take, maybe we're using the whiteboard, maybe we're using some other computer collaboration tools, maybe we're using good old pen and paper, um, what happens when we have to get into SOLIDWORKS? We now have this blank slate and we essentially need to start over. Yeah, we've got some ideas in our head and we may have uh, figured out a few potential mistakes and we can leverage that, but we gotta start over again. We could take a picture of the whiteboard or, or scan in the, uh, the paper, if I've, I've used pen and paper there, and use sketch pictures and trace over it. But, you know, we've got to reinvent the wheel. And that's really what this presentation is kind of centered on, and it's, it's to not have to reinvent the wheel. It's to leverage every possible capability within inside of SolidWorks. So instead of taking the approach of where we use paper, I'll use that example. And then we have to start over everything inside of SolidWorks. Think about a way where we could build these simple mechanisms as 2D sketches complete with full assembly level dynamic motion. And if we need to, we could take it an entire step further and run a full blown motion simulation on that same 2D sketch information. We could then understand force requirements. We could understand power requirements. We could start ordering, you know, motors or linear actuators or whatever it is that we need. So it really allows us to gain so much more insight earlier in the design process as opposed to using some of the traditional methods. So kinematic 2D sketching and how we can leverage that into 3D modeling. Now, it really consists of three basic steps. The first step is the 2D work. That's creating the sketches. Well, then take that 2D work and directly move it ahead into the 3D environment. Now, one thing that I want to point out as we go through this and, and as I'm starting off here is you guys already know how to do this. Everybody that's, that's attending knows how to do 2D sketches inside of SolidWorks. You all know how to build parts and assemblies. So this is using existing, native, you know, everyday SOLIDWORKS functionality just a little bit differently. 
and maybe introducing a couple of new tools and workflows that you're not familiar with or maybe you just haven't thought about in uh, quite some time. And then with anything we do, what kind of insights are we gaining? What are we learning about our design? What issues are we finding? And can we fix those issues earlier in the overall design process? So starting off with the, the basics, the 2D work. Now, this entire functionality leverages what is called the assembly layout environment. Now, when, when we're doing this live, I could easily ask everyone, hey, are you familiar with the assembly layout? Um, you know, maybe get a raise of hands, maybe we don't. But in this layout environment, we're going to generate 2D sketch blocks. 2D sketch blocks are just regular sketches. But once a sketch is uh, inserted into a block, the relationships of that sketch are no longer being solved. The block is basically just a rigid entity. And that makes it very easy to understand the motion without having all the relations being solved simultaneously. And we all know what that's like. The sketch is just like a rubber band and, and stuff is moving around everywhere. And it you know, over defines and we have issues and we have to go in and fix it. So this gives us the power of a 2D sketch, but in kind of a simplified, compartmentalized manner. The next step is to take those blocks and mate them together, just like we do with traditional 3D parts in the assembly space. This is all done within a SolidWorks assembly, so we have that capability to us. Now, I call it we're mating the blocks, but technically, this all uses the sketch solver and 2D sketch relations. So as I mentioned just a couple minutes ago, you already know how to do this. You all know how to add relations. Now we're just relating one block sketch to another block sketch. And this is where it all begins with the create layout. Now I'm sure we've all seen this button, but what do we do? We ignore it, we start putting stuff together in the assembly. So let's jump into SolidWorks here and let's take a look at this real quick. So we start our new assembly, and there's nothing fancy or unique about what I'm doing here. This is just a regular SolidWorks assembly template from our training files. And what happens? Well, we get the window that asks us to begin inserting parts or inserting existing sub-assemblies. And we navigate through windows and we grab the files we need. But I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel right here and focus on this yellow message window, specifically this button right here to create a layout. Now when we select create layout, SolidWorks adds a 3D layout sketch, I'll say kind of on top of the assembly environment. Initially, that sketch is activated on the front plane, but if you need to flip it to the top plane, just double-click. So you can see how easy it is as I double-click through the, the three primary planes to move my layout sketch, I'll call it that, from one plane to another. There's a Layout Toolbar tab on the Command Manager. You may have seen this before and, and completely ignored it. I know I do most of the time. And this is going to house some very familiar tools. Most of your sketching entities are here. The reason I say most is it's because we are in a 3D sketch and not every single sketch tool is available in a SolidWorks 3D sketch. But we've got the core tools, our lines and our arcs and our splines and our converting and mirroring and our relations. Here towards the center is, is some unique functionality, the block toolbar, where we can take our sketches, you know, insert them into a two-dimensional block. We can either make new blocks on the fly, as we'll see here in just a few minutes, or we can insert existing blocks. Blocks can be used for a lot of different things inside of SolidWorks. They can be text for drawings. They can be symbols for you know, the electrical environment or the piping environment. Or in the case here, they're basically going to be our parts. Now, the magic of this entire environment, I'm going to say, is this command right here, make a part from a block. So because we can directly take our 2D kinematic sketches and build parts, we don't lose anything. It's all maintained. Now just like a familiar sketching environment, we have the confirmation corner. This will exit the layout. This will cancel the layout. And if you happen to do either one of those, you can go to the top of the assembly tree, excuse me, with a right click and get right back into that familiar layout environment. 
So even if you've never created an assembly environment before, if you've ever created a 3D sketch, you're familiar with it, and I know you all have created 2D sketches, so you're about 95% familiar with this functionality in this environment. So it's super easy to get to. Basically, it's one-click creation to build your layouts. Everything you need is there. It's a very, very, again, a familiar interface leveraging existing native SOLIDWORKS functionality. It's always been there. We're just going to take advantage of it here. So I keep talking about these blocks. What are they and how do we build them? And that's what I want to talk about now. If you can sketch and then click the Make Block button, you're good to go. That's really all there is to it. So again, we're going to jump back into SOLIDWORKS, and we're going to take our file, and we're going to start moving a little bit forward with this process. Now, as I go through my examples here, I am going to be heavily relying on the little shortcut toolbar that popped up. That comes up with the S key. In my opinion, one of the best things SOLIDWORKS has added to the software in probably the last 10 releases. I know everybody might have a little bit different opinion about that, but I love this functionality. Uh, these are unique per environment. So there's one for sketching, parts, assemblies, and drawings. If you'd like to customize them, you can do that with a right mouse button and choose Customize. And here we can see the buttons for my part shortcut toolbar, the few commands I have on assemblies, drawings, and what I'm really going to be using today is 2D sketching. So this is where all my customizations comes up. So anytime you see this pop up, I'm hitting the S. Yeah, S is in Sam. Thanks for clarifying or asking that question there. So the S key. The F key is zoom to fit, which I might use that periodically from well or as well. So I'm just going to change the view orientation here. I'm not a super huge hotkey user, but you'll see me use that quite a bit. So these are just regular sketches. I'm going to start off with a good old basic line and just kind of draw in what I think my basic mechanism should look like. And this is going to be the frame of what I've got going on in my head right now. I'll use that shortcut toolbar key to just grab regular sketch dimensions and start keying everything in. And in you know, expected SOLIDWORKS fashion, the sketch resizes, the relations hold everything together, and there you can see the dimensions on the screen. That's all the sketch is going to be. Very, very simple because it basically has my base and the endpoints of these two lines, I'm thinking those are going to be my pivot points for, for my mechanism. Up on my layout toolbar, I'll now choose the command to make a block. Windows select or individually select everything that I want to keep. And I'll come over here in the property manager and expand the insertion point. So this is where the block will be placed when you left click the mouse. And you can take that dark blue triad or origin and really drag it and it'll snap to anything you want. I'm going to keep it at the origin for now. That'll work fine for me. And green checkbox OK. All that information is now you know, compartmentalized inside this block. Right now it's called block one. You can select it, hit F2. Windows hotkey to rename, and I'm just going to call it the base. And that'll easily rename the block. Now this is what's really neat, or what I think is really neat about this functionality. Once the sketch is in a block, those relationships are, are fixed within the block. So I can just drag that block around and move it out of the way or start adding more blocks very, very easily. Let's make another block. And again, Maybe I'll use my sketching toolbars up on the Layout tab this time. I'm just going to draw in a very basic rectangle. Shortcut toolbar over to Construction Geometry. I'm a big fan of adding Construction Geometry to my SOLIDWORKS sketches. But as you can see here, I'm not getting super complex. That's not the idea about this is to go super deep into every single detail. I'm just trying to capture some basic spatial requirements of what I think this should look like. You know, the length, the width, things of that nature. And uh, S key over, and you know what? I don't have a command here. I don't have my sketch points. So I'll go up to the layout toolbar and grab my regular sketch points. And I'm going to use sketch points for pivot locations. These maybe are going to be where axles or bearings or shafts are going to go. Again, just a couple of really simple dimensions. 
allows me to position where I think these initial pivot points should go. Super easy, very, very quick. It allows you to really conceptualize everything um, basically as fast as you can sketch it. Again, we'll leverage Make Block, Window Select Everything I Want to Keep, and now I will change the insertion point. Here we can see it's in the lower left-hand corner of the rectangle. Just left-click, hold down the left mouse button, drag and drop, and I'm going to reposition it right to that point right there. And again, we'll say OK. Drag that block around. Everything's compartmentalized. I'm going to rename that block as well. And all I'm doing is selecting the block in the tree, hitting the F, F as in Frank, F2 key right there. And we'll just call that maybe the lever arm or something like that. The nice thing is, is it really doesn't matter. I can rename these at any time. This is a regular SOLIDWORKS assembly, so I'm just going to save it up on the desktop and continue to build these blocks. Now, you don't have to build the blocks only in the assembly environment. At any time, you can build a block right within a normal part. So I'm going to put a good old 2D sketch on the front plane, maybe use a uh, sketch slot to draw in what I think the next piece should be. So again, you know how to do this. You know these tools, like the back of your hand. We understand the design intent. It's very easy to start conceptualizing this. Again, one more sketch point. That's going to be a pivot point right about there, for the lack of a better description. And simply so it doesn't move, I'll add in a dimension. And maybe I'll uh, just bring that down a little bit. Now, when you're in the part environment, you may not have immediate access to your sketch blocks. So what do you do? Well, the first thing I would recommend, if you don't see the command that you need up on any of your command manager tools, is to leverage command search. Don't do what sometimes I do and to hunt and peck through the pull-down menus and try to find whatever it is that you're looking for. Command search is always in the upper right-hand corner of the UI. Make sure that if you hit the little drop-down arrow, you can see the command, the little command prompt, DOS prompt looking, looking icon is selected. And I'm just going to search. I don't have to get very far. You can see I get to BL, and it takes me to where the blocks are located. A little bit down further, I can insert or make a block. All the commands are indexed for this command search. And if you use the little eyeball symbol, the show command location, uh, the ghost in the machine takes over, and SOLIDWORKS will show you exactly where that command is located in the file menu structure. So again, we'll use make block, and it's just the same that we saw earlier. Select what we want. Let's uh, redefine that layout insertion point, and we'll say OK to that. Now this block is in a separate part. I need to use this block in my assembly. Now in order to do that, I need to save the block out. And we can get to that information with a simple right click. I can edit the block to go back in and redefine its size, or I can save the block. And that's what we'll do here. We'll drop that up on the desktop as well. And uh, because I'm not very creative with naming my files sometimes, I'll just call that the long arm and save it out. So think of it as we're saving this information to a library. Now because of that, we actually don't need this file anymore, and we can just close it down. And we, as strange as it seems, we don't need to save it. I'm going to jump back into layout mode by right-clicking on the assembly and choose layout. And now we'll choose the command insert block. And this is going to allow me to add extra instances of the block that this assembly contains, or I can hit browse and go to my desktop and just grab that long arm block that I created moments ago. Now the next few blocks I need, I've already built for the sake of time, so I'll also hit browse. Now browsing for a block, I'll admit, isn't uh, super friendly because it always goes back to the this PC entry in Windows. So if you're going to do this over and over and over, I recommend having some shortcuts set up so it makes it a little bit easier to grab the files. I'm going to grab a hold down block, which is just a skinny little inverted T piece of geometry, and browse again to the this PC area. I'll use my shortcut and grab the short link. And we'll just left click to place those. Very, very easy to reuse any existing 
blocks or components from a library. Again, because we're essentially quote unquote adding components, I'll save the assembly. Very, very easy to use this environment. You know how to sketch, create the blocks on the fly, or insert any existing group of blocks, um, you know, if they're from a library. So the T 2D work, we're really almost wrapping it up. The last thing we need to do is talk about how we make these blocks. And I'll say this is where the magic begins to happen. We go very, very easily from a static 2D sketch to a dynamic uh, kinematic 2D sketch. And it, again, is a very familiar interface of using these sketch relations to have this assembly mate type functionality. So as I save, it rebuilds, it dumps me out of layout mode, so I'll go back into layout mode. And let's start putting our blocks together. And just like a regular SOLIDWORKS assembly, I'm going to start with the fixed component, and that's this little L-shaped uh, block that I call the base. I'm going to take this point, drag it, and drop it onto the assembly origin. We see the familiar yellow feedback that lets us know we're adding in our good old coincidence relationship. So even though we're in assemblies, we're in this kind of hybrid sketch assembly environment, we're adding in 2D sketch relations. The motion is always there. I can rock that base around, but that's not a degree of freedom I want it to have. So we'll select the line, and we'll simply make it horizontal. And that basically fully defines that part. Again, super fast, very, very easy to do. Now to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm going to right click expand the, the toolbar here and just turn off 3D Sketch on plane. And that'll hide that 3D Sketch. Now, unfortunately, it turns on a lot of extra relations in the graphics window, so temporarily I'm going to turn off the view uh, sketch relations. The next part I want to assemble or block, excuse me, is this part right here. And I'm going to take my sketch point, my pivot point, and place it right on the end there. So you can drag and drop add that coincidence, and you can see just how easy the motion is. We're already building motion into our system. If you're not a fan of drag and drop, that's fine. Select the point, hold down the control key, select another point, and add in a coincidence from the pop-up toolbar. And then once we add this relationship in there, things get very, very interesting. Now maybe we're building a, you know, equipment for an oil well in this case. But you can really start to conceptualize everything, you know, almost instantly. As soon as you sketch, you're putting it together in this block environment, you're getting an idea about how the motion is going to work, or maybe, unfortunately, the motion doesn't work as expected. So we'll just add in a few more relations here, make those collinear, and in this lever-actuated hold-down clamp, that's all I need this to do. Let's take the longer arm. Again, I'll just drag and drop it onto that point. And as I left click and drag, the motion really becomes apparent. The last thing I need to do is couple this motion with this motion, and that's where my short little horizontal link is. So I'll just use a couple of instances of holding down the control key, make it coincidence, and I'll do the same thing here. Hold down the control key between those points, make it coincident, and in just a couple of minutes, we've now got a really good dynamic 2D sketch. So if you know how to sketch and you know how to add relations, the only thing you really need to, to get familiar with is this button right here, make a block. Everything else, is just good old, nice SOLIDWORKS 2D sketching. Now, even though we're in an assembly, and I've, I sometimes call this mates, this motion is based on the 2D sketch solver. So the sketch solver is a very, very powerful tool. Combining it with blocks, you can see just how far this functionality can take you. So you can see the motion earlier, you know, almost instantly. 
and it's this really nice hybrid assembly style of mating these 2D shapes in these blocks. You can already start making design changes if you need to. If you don't like what you see, as we'll see here, very, very edit, easy to edit these blocks, and we can go ahead and make the changes. Now, I mentioned a little bit earlier in the very start of the presentation, what if you want to go crazy with this functionality? Well, the cool thing is, is that you can. From a very simple, two-dimensional, you know, sketch with blocks and the sketch relations, again, you can set up a full motion simulation. Understand the force requirements, the power requirements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So even though I'm using the most basic sense of this functionality, uh, you can get some very, very advanced results out of it. Now you might be thinking, this is really great. It's it's easy to create. A couple clicks of the mouse to create them. Building these blocks is, you know, almost effortless on the fly. And yes, the motion is is really really cool. But what about the 3D work? This is called SolidWorks. It's all about building those 3D models so we can start understanding mass properties. We can start using our full assembly capabilities. Well, thankfully, there is an effortless way to take our 2D sketch blocks and create 3D model geometry. Because we're in a full-blown SolidWorks assembly, we can take those 3D parts, do all sorts of assembly design. Maybe we're, we want to get into in-context design and start referencing uh, one model to another. We want to have that associativity between the parts. All the assembly design changes are available to you if you leverage these 2D kinematic sketches. You're just adding functionality. You're not removing anything out of uh, you know, traditional SolidWorks assemblies. So let's take a look at how we can go almost magically from our 2D dynamic sketch to our 3D assembly. And we'll just keep building on, on this little simple assembly here. I will go grab a couple of uh, created files to speed the process up, but let's start with the base. So we'll select that base block over in the, the assembly tree. I guess I better get into layout mode first. That will help. Now let's select that base block, and we'll choose the command make part from block. Now the only decision we need to, we need to make is, is if or is is this part going to be attached to the block? Think of it as the extruded boss being attached to the sketching plane. Or do we need to position the solid model or the solid geometry somewhere parallel to our block sketch plane? And that's where the project option comes into play. I'll show a couple of examples of how each of these work. But initially, we're just going to use on the block. SolidWorks builds us a part inserts the block as a sketch into that part, and if we want to work on it in its own modeling window, we can go ahead, right-click, open that part up. Maybe we want to use it as a, a framework and make a new sketch, and we can just start drawing in whatever we think the rest of this part should look like. So I'll just start adding in a few pieces of sketch geometry here. Not doing a very good job of capturing some relations, so I'm going to have to clean it up. Specifically, this little line right here, I kind of blew that one, so I'll just drag and drop and clean that up and get a nice closed contour. Again, leveraging that shortcut toolbar, I'll grab my Smart Dimension tool, and maybe I want that notch to be about 15 millimeters. Again, over to the shortcut tool, I'm just going to take a couple of the sharp edges off with a sketch fillet. And maybe we'll put one there and one there. You can barely see those fillets, so I should probably increase the radius and I think that looks pretty good right there. Now, these endpoints of these two lines that I'm selecting on, again, those are essentially my pivot points for my mechanism. So I'm going to take the center of the arc for my fillet and just make it coincidence to those pivot locations. So nothing too complex here, just adding in a couple of coincident relationships to help build in the basic shape of this, uh, this base block. Normal extruded boss, and we're already taking it into a 3D model. So you can see I'm not losing anything. 
I could have extruded that inverted or that L shape if I wanted to, but I just added in a little bit more geometry to make the part a bit more interestingly, uh, you know, interesting looking. If we switch back to the assembly space, it's going to update exactly the way any assembly you've ever built does. So there's my block. All right, it's not bad. It needs a little bit more work. You know, because I have this solid model, model so early in the design process, I can already maybe think about how it's going to be manufactured, and this is possibly going to be a sheet metal part. So I'm just going to use convert to sheet metal and go ahead and turn this into a sheet metal part. This is going to be my fixed face, and we'll choose this sharp edge for a bend, and then that sharp edge for a bend right there. Now that bend radius is a little bit much, so I think I'll change that just down to four. There we go. And now I've got a sheet metal part. Complete with the flat pattern, I can already you know, send it out to the job shop and get an estimation on how much this part is going to cost to manufacture. So very, very quickly, we're now taking our 2D parts, converting them into 3D parts, and because they're built of those blocks, they're positioned exactly where they need to be in the assembly. Let's take this a few more steps. Let's go ahead and make a new block from a part, or a part from a block, excuse me, and let's use that lever arm. Again, we're gonna use the on block option. Now I'm choosing to right click and open these up into their own modeling windows, but you have full in context part editing capabilities here as well because again it's just a normal SOLIDWORKS assembly. So I'll put a new sketch on the front plane and maybe I want this to be again just based off my my block as the frame. I'll just add in a few points, make it a little bit longer with a dimension and that's really all that I'm going to do. These are just simple conceptual models at this point. So I'll just extrude a boss get a nice little block, control the depth with a mid-plane in condition, and uh, things are uh, coming along nicely. Now, because the first part was sheet metal, maybe I want the second part to sheet metal, or to be sheet metal as well. So I'm going to use a full round fillet, and I'm just going to select a face, right click to jump to the next selection. So that's a little shortcut you can leverage when you use a full round fillet. As soon as you select a face, hit the right mouse button and it will jump you from one face selection window to the next face selection window. And I can go ahead and grab that final side, right click is the green checkbox to OK, and there we can see the part. Now I think convert to sheet metal is a really cool piece of SOLIDWORKS functionality, so I'm going to use it one more time. And we'll just choose the face on the side, collect all the bends. Oh, looks like I better change the wall thickness. A little bit too thick right here. And there we can see basically this U-shaped piece of sheet metal is created. A couple of features in the tree. We save the part. We close the window. It updates. And again, its position is based on the blocks. So the motion is just automatically you know, moved forward from the 2D sketch block into the uh, 3D part. Now let's take a look at these two links, the long lever arm and the short link. They don't run down the center line of the part. They're actually gonna be assembled essentially on the outside. So this is where that other option of project comes into play. So we'll go ahead and we'll select the long arm from the feature manager assembly tree and we'll just project it in there. And to do things a little bit differently, I'll just right click on this part, go into edit part mode, and now directly from uh, the assembly environment, I can grab that sketch and turn it into a sheet metal base flange. And I'll just use that same three millimeter uh, sheet metal wall thickness. And this is a really simple part. That's all it's going to contain right now. But now notice I can grab that part and I'm gonna be able to slide it parallel off of that block. So that's what the project option gives you when you use the make part from block. So now we can use a standard SOLIDWORKS assembly mate to select those two faces and in the pop-up mate toolbar, make them coincidence to position that part correctly. So we're truly using kind of this hybrid environment or the power of both the 2D sketch solver and the assembly relations or the assembly mates. Last one I'll do is we'll grab the short link. And I'll do this 
a different way, and you can right-click on the blocks and make a part from a block. Again, I'll leverage project. We'll say OK. And we'll just jump into edit part mode, and really quickly I'll use the sketch profile for a sheet metal base flange. And this part will also be able to slide from, in this case, left to right. There we go. You can see it kind of moves everything with my mechanism. So I need a little bit more information to help me stabilize it. So again, I'll select a couple of faces, and we'll just make a coincidence mate. And then just a couple of minutes, most of it was me talking, I'm going immediately from 2D sketches to 3D parts while maintaining all the assembly motion. It's all based on those very powerful um, 2D sketch uh, relationships in the blocks. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close this down and open up a model that I've, I've made a few modifications to for the sake of time. I've added in the hold down component at the end, and I've added in a few sheet metal jog features. Here you can see them here to that bracket right there. Now, in this example, I also need a short link and a long arm on the right-hand side of the part. So you can leverage familiar assembly features such as component, component patterns, mirrors. Maybe you want to leverage whole wizard holes. Everything is available to you. So I can leverage mirror components. We'll mirror these two parts right across the front plane and just preview their position, and that looks pretty good to me. And as quick as that, our half assembly is now a fully complete assembly. And this is just a, again, it's a normal assembly that we're leveraging the power of the 2D sketch solver and these sketch blocks to help get us to a 3D assembly. We could put it into a drawing now, we could build an exploded view, we could get our bills of materials. Um, just a, a few moments into the design process. And now we can really begin to understand whether or not this idea, you know, this mechanism is going to work. Maybe we need to make some design changes. Maybe we need to scrap everything and start over. But you can see just how quickly we can go from the 2D to the 3D. We don't waste any of that work. We can leverage all assembly functionality. Um, we're not limited by anything just because we used a couple of sketch blocks. Now, what about other assembly of, of functionality? Well, let's do a little bit of really quick in-context work. Now, in-context design, it's kind of a polarizing subject. Um, that's just adding features or designing parts within or in context of the assembly and being able to reference other components to help us position those features. Now, by leveraging this very powerful functionality, we do get a part-to-part -part relationship and associativity. So not everybody needs or wants to take advantage of this uh, functionality. Maybe you're a little bit scared off. Uh, maybe you used it, you know, in your early days of just learning SOLIDWORKS and didn't really understand what's going on. Uh, but when used effectively, it is very, very useful functionality. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump over to another part here. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm hitting the R key, R for uh, Richard here. That brings up the recent documents on the welcome screen for SOLIDWORKS 2018. And I've just pinned a couple of examples of files that I want to use. Like the shortcut toolbar, I love pinning files that I need to work with on a daily basis. It just makes it really easy to open them up, and that way I don't have to remember where I saved them on my drive or on the network. So I'm going to right-click and hide the layout, and I'm just going to add in a couple of whole wizard holes so you can get the idea of how this works. So just a standard whole wizard assembly feature. All your assembly, or excuse me, your whole wizard functions are here. But what I'm going to leverage is an easy to overlook look option down at the very bottom, and that is to propagate this feature at the part, or down to the parts. So we're going to add these holes in the assembly, but SOLIDWORKS is going to build feature level operations down at the part level. I'm also going to turn off auto select, and the reason for that is if it's visible, SOLIDWORKS is going to punch a hole through it, and I only want a hole through a couple of features. So we'll select this right here. We'll just hover over the edge to find the center of that link. 
And what I forgot to do was actually uh, select the models right here. So let me select this part and this part. I'm not going to select the link on the far side because it's an instance copy and it will essentially already have that hole created. We'll say OK, and the in context hole wizard hole is created. So what am I referring to? If I open this part up into its own window, the hole has been created at the assembly level, but it's driven down into the part level. So if that assembly level feature changes, everything within my part model will automatically be up to date. Let's add in a few more. Let's add another hole to our long kind of lever arm here. And I'll speed this process up a little bit here. I'll use the same size hole, grab a couple of components, and position it. Except I can't see what I need to see. So let's change the display state to full wireframe. And now I can infer the center of the short link. And we'll go ahead and we'll just find that center point. We'll position it right there. And we can see very, very quickly, we'll start adding in these extra features. We need a few more holes here. So we'll make a few selections. We'll use the same size over and over and over. And we'll add in the second hole on the other side of the link. Again, all I'm doing is just pausing over the circular edge. SolidWorks lights up the center point and I can easily click on it, and we can go ahead and build that feature in there. And last but not least, we need one final hole on that model. Now, I'm using hole wizard holes as an example of an in-context feature, but you can do anything you're familiar and comfortable with. You can right-click into edit part mode. You can add your, your new sketches, your new features, your cuts, your bosses, your fillets, your chamfers, whatever it is that you need you know, it's available for you. So I now have four M3 clearance holes at the assembly level, but if I open up any of these parts at the part level, I have the appropriate parts as well, complete with the holes in the flat pattern. So we're really taking it full circle. We have everything we need to manufacture our simple little sheet metal parts, starting with the easy to understand 2D sketch blocks, all the motion is maintained. We can now start putting hardware in there, grabbing any fasteners, anything we need to start making this a more complete assembly inside of SolidWorks. So very easy to reference all your part geometry. Use your assembly features. Use your cuts, your bosses. Again, anything you can do in a regular SolidWorks assembly is available here because it is just a regular SOLIDWORKS assembly. Okay, maybe you don't want to go into in-context design. What about just simple design changes? What about changing the dimensions of the linkage to understand uh, how that impacts the motion? Well, this is just a SOLIDWORKS assembly, and we can make those changes the same way that we're used to making everything um, at any time. So here we have another example. It is a little bit different though if you leverage a block. In this case, I've added in some hardware. In order to make the design changes to the blocks, there's one step you'll need to familiarize yourself with, and that is to right click on any component and edit the underlying 2D block. That's the only difference. If you don't use edit block, you won't have the, you know, kind of regular double click on the feature to get the dimensions on. Even if I go to the feature manager tree, it's really not there because that information is, is kind of compartmentalized inside that block. So right click on the part you want to modify, edit the block, you'll be taken into that block mode and you could change the dimensions. Now you're in that familiar dimensional change environment. We change the dimensions. Make sure you do a full rebuild because the software needs that rebuild cycle in order to update the geometry and update that block. So it's very easy to iterate by right-clicking, edit the block. We can see, all right, maybe changing it to 25 really wasn't a very good change. We'll go back to 28. I'm just hitting Control-B the control key, B as in Bob, 
is a hotkey to rebuild. It does the same thing as the rebuild button, and that just makes those changes. Any part can be modified with a right click, leverage that edit block. I could go in and change all those dimensions, change my, my sketch points that represent my pivot locations, and it's just like everything else. So even if you don't get into in-context design, that's not a requirement, this is a real assembly, everything's available to you. Now, just in case you were uh, maybe wondering, we're technically using a little bit of in-context design because we're putting these blocks together in the assembly layout and we're building the parts within that assembly environment. So once we get our 3D model built like we have here, we understand that we're not wasting any of that 2D work. Everything's available to us and you can use all of your assembly design skills to really make this assembly as powerful as you need it to be. Now wrapping up, because this is a SOLIDWORKS assembly, what can we learn? Well, of course we can use collision detection. Maybe we want to use some other functionality that not a lot of people are aware of called sensors to help us get an understanding about what's going on in the assembly. So collision detection with one of these assemblies works exactly like every other assembly. I'll use the model that I had open. Now that I've got my fasteners in there, the question is, does it actually work? Let's find out. Let's go to Move Component, Collision Detection, and we'll stop it at the collision. And as I grab the lever arm, even though the part is based off of a 2D sketch block and that motion is based off of that sketch block, you can see my assembly design is not very good. Uh, the, the head of that cap screw is going to hit that little jog portion of the, of the model. And if I rotate it around, yeah, we're probably going to hit the nut on the other side of that fastener stack. So just like any other SOLIDWORKS assembly, we can really understand what's going on in the design, make these changes early in the design process. Thankfully, I haven't sent this part out to manufacturing, and I don't have any worthless parts or, you know, scrap in this instance. So let's just make a change. Now the jogs are regular SOLIDWORKS features. They're not designed off the, uh, or they're not designed off of a block. So I can just double click and bring it in there. So I'll double click the position of that dimension, and let's just maybe change it to another number, rebuild, see what it looks like. There you can see the geometry changed on the screen, and we'll run through one final iteration, hopefully a final iteration of stop at collision. And there we can see works much, much better. So we're using a combination of block-based parts and normal SOLIDWORKS parts in my hardware stack. These are just regular toolbox parts, and they all work together to help you understand what's going on in the assembly. So you don't have to be limited on any of this. All that work is brought all the way forward to you know, some of the 3D assembly analysis tools. And again, it's not just for those 2D block parts. So the last thing I want to talk about, simply because not a lot of people know, is sensors. So sensors are little features you can add to your SOLIDWORKS parts and assemblies to keep track of just about everything. Now, if you are familiar with sensors, it's probably because you're a simulation user and you leverage them in simulation to keep track of stresses, displacements, factors of safety, thing of that things of that nature. But you can also use them in your parts and assemblies. I kind of think of it as bonus functionality. I hardly ever see these used in SOLIDWORKS, so I thought I would throw it in at the very, very tail end of this example. So the last model I'll look at is the exact same thing that we've had, and I've just turned on the layout sketch. Hide it and show it. There we go. So again, this drives the entire motion of the system. So I want the sensor to keep track of a few uh, pieces of information for me. So to help me out, I'm just going to put a dimension in there. So I'll grab a regular reference dimension from the bottom of my model, from the bottom of the plate, from that face to the center of my layout sketch. And that's going to keep track of basically that vertical distance. Now I don't want to watch what's going on, and this is where sensors can help me out. 
So on the Evaluate tab is the sensor command. Everybody has access to this. You don't have to be a, a simulation user to leverage a sensor. All types of SOLIDWORKS licenses have this. So we can see SIM data. There's all the good simulation data. Maybe you just want to keep track of mass properties. Maybe you want to keep track of dimensions or collisions or interferences. There's a lot that this tool can watch for you. Now, if you choose dimensions, it gets a little crazy on screen because every dimension is visible, but I'll go ahead and select the reference dimension that I find important. I want it to notify me if that value is greater than 5 millimeters. You can see some other options. It's less than, exactly, is not greater than, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll just put this sensor in there. Now, sensors do have notifications on them. And if you're going to leverage sensors, you do need to be aware of how these notifications work. They really only pop up when the model is being rebuilt. So I'm going to right-click on the sensor folder and go to the notifications. So it's kind of a hidden function with sensors. You want to watch these options. They are typically set to, I think, 10 or 15 different uh, rebuilds or saves. You want to adjust these as you see fit. So for the sake of example, I've set them for every rebuild. So the What's Wrong box pops up every time I do a Control B to rebuild. So if I move this and I rebuild, it's going to tell me, all right, that value is still greater than 5 millimeters. So this kind of lets me know that this design really isn't adequate, and that's basically, you know, full throw that I have. As the model rebuilds, it's only 10 millimeters. I need it, or it's almost 11, I need it down to 5. So we need to make a few design changes. Well, this is probably where editing the length of this link could help us out. So again, just some basic model editing here. Let's change this link to something a little bit larger. You know, maybe I'll bump it up to 30 or something like that. Because we're in a sketch, you can see the sketch instantly changes, so we need that control B to rebuild. That'll recalculate the model geometry and then put the links back together. Now I'm just going to go to maximum throw right here, and you can see, you know, we're actually greater than 5, but we're at 5 on the other side. So this gives me a little bit more confidence that this is going to work. So every time I move it, it's just going to go ahead and rebuild and give me this information right up on the screen there. So just another way to leverage some kind of peripheral SOLIDWORKS functionality leveraging the sensors. So this is just a couple of examples of the full suite of assembly analysis tools that you have at your fingertips. Um, you have full iterative abilities, everything you want to do, you can do right here. So just to cover, really leveraging all that 2D work, all your assembly evaluation tools are there. So with this alternative approach, instead of looking at mechanism design like this where we've got to redo everything, we can be the SOLIDWORKS hero, look at mechanism design, leveraging our 2D kinematic sketches, and really conceptualize everything right from the beginning. So what now? Well, take a look at these. You know, you can do this right now inside of SOLIDWORKS. There's some really great tutorials to help you out. The advanced tutorials sketch blocks. You can build this neat little crane, kind of have some hydraulic cylinders represented in there. Um, you know, try running a motion analysis on this uh, block geometry. Now, for our upcoming webinars, we have one next week for the additive manufacturing looking at the Roland CNC. And then beginning October 1, we have a ton of webcasts for our Design Innovation Month webcasts. This is where we're really focusing on everything um, about SOLIDWORKS. So we're starting off with a, one about some scanning, and then in the afternoon, we're going to have one on assembly tips and tricks. So every single business day in October, we will have two webcasts, morning and afternoon. Take a look at the uh, webinar schedule you can see there, or just go to the CATI website, you know, sign up for any of these Design Innovation Month webcasts, and sign up for one of our live events. 
you know, if you're in Oregon, I hope to see you at our local design innovation event that we're going to be holding in the middle of October. So everyone, thank you very much for spending a bit of your day with me. If you have any questions, feel free to send them in. Uh, if you have any questions that come up after the fact, there's my email address. There's the phone number on how to get a hold of us. Um, again, thank you very, very much. A uh, question right here. Uh, can you use existing blocks? Absolutely. Blocks can be added into any SOLIDWORKS assembly. You do not have to start with blocks. You can just add them in. Um, design tables, because the 2D sketch blocks are just regular sketches, um, you could have those parameters controlled in either configurations or a design table. Uh, because that information is kind of compartmentalized inside the block, you're going to have to you know, edit the block to get in there to make those changes. So it might be an extra step, uh, but it is something that you could leverage if you want to. Well, everybody, thank you for sending in your questions. I don't see too many outstanding questions. I think I hit them all. Uh, if you send them in and I miss them, I apologize. Uh, if you don't get a response in a you know, short time, just send me an email. Once again, there's my email address up on the screen. i um, be happy to answer anything I can. So thank you very much.